Hello, this is a tutorial on how to use the Microsoft Visual Studio Debugger to debug your C programs. Proper debugging skills will save you a lot of time trying to get your code working. The most effective method of debugging involves using a tool that allows us to pause and inspect the state of our program, ensuring it's doing what we want it to. This tool is called a debugger and is included in most modern integrated development environments. First, let's talk about breakpoints. So essentially, breakpoints are points in your code at which the debugger will pause the execution of your code and allow you to analyze the current state of your program, such as the values of variables. The most common way to set a breakpoint is using what we call the gutter. The gutter is this strip on the left side of your screen where if you click, you can set a breakpoint on the corresponding line. Here I've set a breakpoint on line 17 meaning that the code will pause whenever line 17 is executed. Click the green arrow to enter into the debugger. I will enter a sample input just for testing purposes. As you can see after I enter the input, which was not visible on screen, we have paused at this average equals sum over count line, which is where line 17 where we set our breakpoint. Now let's talk about basic control functions. The first basic control function is step into. This will step into the function on the current next line to be executed, which in this case is line 17. However, there is no function on line 17, and therefore this control function will instead simply move to the next line, executing the current line. Step over executes the current function and moves to the next line, essentially skipping or stepping over the current function. Step out steps out of the current function. In this case, our current function is main, and pressing uh, step out is going to cause us to exit the main function, ending the execution of the program. Finally, restart will restart the current program and stop will exit the debugger. Now let's talk about viewing the current state of our program. Let's start the debugger again. I'll enter a sample input for testing purposes. Now if you go to the bottom view, you can see a tab called locals. Click on that tab and you can see all the variables and their values that are currently accessible by the program. Click on the tab watch one. Here we can add the names of variables that we would like to watch the values of. For this example I'm going to add the variable average. Average is a float defined on line 7 that is later updated on line 17. I will press step into to move the execution of the code along to the next line and you can see that the value of average is updated. To view the program memory go to debug windows memory and then memory 1. In this case we cannot see specific memory values because we are not using dynamically allocated memory or referencing memory addresses. Now let's go through a simple example of using the debugger. The first step to debugging any program is understanding what the program is doing. This program is reading in values from the command line, adding them together into the variable sum, and it is then computing the average being sum divided by the number of variables that were read from the command line. Let's try a sample case with this program. I'll run the debugger and enter off screen the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. Notice how the code stops running at line 17. Stepping forward and going to the locals tab, we can see that the average computed is 2. The average of 1, 2, 3, and 4 should be 2.5. A simple mistake like this 
in a simple program can typically be determined just by reading the code. However, in a more complex program with more complex mistakes, the debugger is vital. Let's run the debugger again and figure out what the problem is. Again, I'm entering the same test case. Now, looking at the locals tab, we can see that the count is 4, which is correct. The sum is 10. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 10. How come 10 divided by 4 is giving us the value 2? If we look at this line, we can see that Visual Studio has actually underlined this with red, as this is a simple mistake that many people make. An integer divided by an integer will always be equal to another integer in C. Therefore, our, our n value 2.5 is being truncated to the value 2. To fix this problem, we simply need to first cast sum to a float. Let's use the restart function to try our sample case again. Off screen, I've entered the same sample case. Step forward in the code, and we can now see that the average is 2.5, which is what we expect. You can add conditions to breakpoints. This is very useful when you want to see what's going on during a specific iteration of a loop. Let's add a conditional breakpoint at the end of this for loop. Right click the breakpoint and go to conditions. Let's make it so this breakpoint is only triggered when i is equal to 3. Now let's run the debugger and see what happens. You can see that we've paused at this breakpoint and the value of i is 3. Another trick that may come in handy is changing the next line to be executed. To do this, simply drag and drop the arrow that indicates the next line that the debugger will execute. You can also use the debugger to view the values in single and multidimensional arrays. To showcase this, I have added a single and a multidimensional array to our demo program. To do this, run the debugger Then go to the Watch 1 tab. The name of the array we want to inspect is Values. To see the first n elements of an array, enter the array name, comma, and then the number of elements you would like to see. Here we are inspecting the first 10 elements of the array values. To view a multidimensional array, Unfortunately, there is no elegant solution. We will have to manually add the rows that we would like to view. To showcase this, I will show the first three rows of example underscore md underscore array. Copy the name of the array and use the following syntax to show the corresponding rows in said array. Finally, when you're done debugging your program, you can remove or disable all breakpoints. Let's add some more breakpoints to showcase this. To disable all breakpoints, go to Debug and Disable All Breakpoints. This prevents the breakpoints from being triggered, but allows them to be re-enabled in the future if needed. If you would like to re-enable your disabled breakpoints, go to Debug and enable all breakpoints. Finally, when you are done debugging, you can go to debug, delete all breakpoints, and all of your breakpoints will be removed. And those are the basics of the Visual Studio 2019 debugger. I hope this video saves you plenty of time while debugging. Good luck in your programming adventures.